Ito po mga nakalipas na araw, ito mga nakalipas na linggo, tinatalakay po natin sa ating church ang isang message series na pinamagatan po nating Miracles Do Happen. At naniniwala po tayo bilang isang church, tayo na mga Kristiyano, we believe in what the Bible has uh, been teaching, has been sharing, many many stories of God's amazing miracles, that God moves in people's lives. At pag ang Diyos kumikilo sa buhay ng kanyang mga anak, ang Panginoon nagpapakita sa atin ng kanyang kapangyarihan, siya'y naghihimala. At uh, marami po sa atin, may mga personal needs in life, may mga prayer request, may mga mahal tayo sa buhay na maaring ang kailangan natin, kailangan nila ay himala na nagmumula sa ating Panginoon. Let's continue to believe that yes, because of Jesus Christ, miracles do happen. Sabihin po nga natin yan ng sabay-sabay, miracles do happen. At pinagpapatuloy po natin ang part 5 ng message series na ito kung saan ng mga naunang mensahe tumalakay tungkol sa una sa lahat, Mahalaga that we fill our minds with thoughts of faith. Na pinupuno natin ang ating puso't isipan ng mga bagay na nagpapalakas ng ating pananampalataya. Tinalakay din po natin ang kahalagahan na binibigkas po natin words of faith, that we speak words of faith. At kung just in case lang po hindi nyo napakinggan yan live, available po ang mga messages na sa ating YouTube channel, Dalam po kayo sa YouTube and type are you church. But today we focus on the third and last part of part five at yun ito sa laying on of hands. The importance of laying on of hands. Nakikita po natin ito sa mga churches, napapanood natin ito sa mga TV programs, kung saan may mga evangelists, at maging sa ating sariling church. We see our people, our leaders, mga attendees natin laying hands on each other. Ano po ba ang ibig sabihin niya, ang kahalagahan niya, at paano natin pwede gawin din ito is the focus of our message for tonight. Minsan pa po tayo manalangin sa Panginoon, let's commit to the Lord the study of His Word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that today we can worship you in this place. We feel your presence, Lord. Nararamdaman namin ang inyong makapangirin presensya sa aming kalagitnaan. Salamat po sa aming music ministry, sa aming mga singers and musicians that continues to lead us into the presence of God as we worship. And even as we study your word, Lord, we dedicate ourselves. Binubuksan po namin ang aming puso't isipan para ang inyong espirito ang siyang mangusap sa amin. Gamitin mo po ako bilang inyong messenger. And everything that shall come out of my mouth will be words of encouragement, comfort, guidance, and blessing for your people. And we resist all works of Satan in Jesus' name. Lahat ng ginagawa ng kaaway upang kami iguluhin, Lord, we declare Satan defeated in Jesus' name. We just welcome your Holy Spirit. Increase your anointing in our midst, O God. Make us closer to you. Make us closer to Jesus. And we give to you all glory, honor, and praises as we pray all of these things in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, this is our prayer. And all God's people say, Amen. Miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. At para po sa ikalimang bahagi ng message series na ito, nagpo-focus po tayo sa tinatawag natin na the things we can do to exercise our faith. The things that we can do to exercise our faith. At isa nga po sa pwede nating ginagawa at dapat laging ginagawa ay yung pag-exercise ng faith natin as we lay our hands on people. As we lay hands on people. Dahil isang bagay po ang pinaniniwalaan po natin tukol sa laying on of hands. It is this, that people of extraordinary faith lay hands and miracles happen. We believe this, that people of extraordinary faith lay hands and miracles happen. Mark 16:17 to 18 in the Bible says. Mark 16:17 to 18 in the Bible says, these signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. May isa pa nga po natin basahin yan. Mark 16, 17 to 18 says, These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. 
Ama binabasa ko po itong Mark 16:17 to 18. Parang ang uh, na, nagpa-flash sa aking isipan ay yung mga napapanood natin ngayon sa mga TV series. Mayroong mga superheroes na may kakaibang kapangyarihan. O yung mga napapanood natin sa mga films ngayon, medyo uso. Yung mga iba't ibang klasing mga tao na may kakaibang kapangyarihan. Pero yung pinag-uusapan po natin dito ay hindi fantasy, hindi superstition, at lalong hindi siya magic. What is this? The power of God. That because we are believers of Jesus Christ, naniniwala po tayo yung power ng God pwedeng dumaloy sa atin na kanyang mga anak. Naniniwala po tayo dyan na dahil tayo believers of Jesus Christ, ang Jesus natin makapangyarihan at yung kapangyarihan niya pwedeng dumaloy sa atin na kanyang mga anak. If you believe that, say Amen! Amen! amen. At ano tawag natin dun sa mga taong dumadaloy ang kapangyarihan ng Lord sa kanila? We call them people of extraordinary faith. We call them people of extraordinary faith. Disciples of Jesus Christ. Disciples of Jesus Christ, they're described as people of extraordinary faith. Hindi lang basta may religion. You ask a lot of people, especially among Filipinos, halos lahat may religion. Although meron din naman mga mong Filipinos, atheists, pero karamihan ng mga Pilipino may relihiyon. Katoliko, protestante, born again, muslim, at iba't iba pang mga grupo. But a person can have religion but do not have the power of God. A person could even be knowledgeable about the spiritual things, about religious matters, but do not possess the power of God. Dahil sino lang ang pwedeng daluyan ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos? Yung kanyang anak, yung kanyang follower, yung kanyang disciple. At ang tawag natin sa anak ng Diyos, follower ni Jesus, disciple ni Jesus, people of extraordinary faith. At ang pinapanalangin po natin sa ating church, yung mga dadalo sa ating simbahan, maglilingkod sa ating simbahan, magiging leader sa ating simbahan, ang desire natin. Pag sinabi mong dumadalo sa Rise Up Church, that these are people who are developing an extraordinary faith in God. That these are people who's developing an extraordinary faith in God. It is my desire for myself. Na ako'y makikilala bilang isang likod ng Diyos is that people also know that I, as a leader of God, as a servant of God, is that I am a servant of extraordinary faith. At I pray na ganun din na maging design sa inyong mga sarili na magkaroon ng bawat isa sa atin ng extraordinary faith. Say this with me. I want to have an extraordinary faith. Say that one more time. I want to have an extraordinary faith. Yung pag meron kang kaibigan, may sakit. Bukod sa pupunta sa doktor, sa'yo pupunta. Kasi alam nila, mukha kaalbularyo. Joke lang. Kasi alam nila, pag nakita ka, ay, may extraordinary faith sa God yun eh. Gusto ko magpa-pray sa kanya. Meron ba sa inyo naranasan na yan? Sa inyong opisina? among your co-workers, or even the people who lives with you in the flat, nung nalaman nilang born again Christian ka, nung nalaman nilang mana ng palataya ka, eh kahit hindi sila sumasama sa isa church, nagpapapray. Sino sa inyo naranasan na yan? Pakitaas nga ang kamay na meron na nagpapray sa inyo. Can you raise your hands? Praise the Lord. Praise God. At anong inaasahan nila nung nagpray ka na sila ay tutugunin ng Panginoon? And I pray na dumami pa ang mga taong makakilala sa atin, hindi dahil para tayo sumikat, hindi dahil para tayo magmukhang religious, hindi para tayo maging bida. Dahil it's totally the opposite. Totally the opposite sa isang taong nagkakaroon na extraordinary faith, hindi siya yumayabang, siya'y nagiging mapagkumbaba. Yung taong nagkakaroon na extraordinary faith, hindi siya nagiging mayabang, siya'y nagiging mapagkumbaba. Lalo niya realize it's not him, but it's the Lord. Pag nakatagpo kayo ng halimbawa ng isang pastor o servant dapat ng God, o di kaya isang active attendee in church, tapos yung nagiging focus sa sarili niya, Uh, magduda ka na kung yun eh sa Lord. Kasi hindi dapat nagiging focus tayo. Kahit palimbawa sa pamagitan ng ating prayer may gumagaling. Sa pamagitan ng ating ministry may nabibless. Dapat na nagiging focus si Jesus Christ. Yun yung taong may extraordinary faith. It, it, it comes out not just in these manifestations, outward manifestations. It is seen in their testimony, in their character, and in their attitude. Tagdagan pa natin na yung people of extraordinary faith, hindi lang sila puro himala, Like kalimbawa, pag may pinag-pray na may sakit, gumaling, e eh, nakikita yung pinakadakilang himala sa pagbabago ng kanilang buhay. Na nakikita yung pinakadakilang himala sa pagbabago ng kanilang buhay. At hindi ba sobrang nakakabless dating basagulero nung binago ni Jesus Christ ngayon napakabait. 
Yung dating halimbawa, e eh, manggagancho ng kapwa-tao, ngayon e eh, nagiging honest at tapat na sa pakikitungo sa iba. Yung dating babaero, lalakero na ngayon. <laughs> Joke lang. Yung dating nagfa-flirt, nanlalandi ng kung sino-sino, nanluloko pagdating sa love life, may kilala ba kayong ganyan na notorious? Kahit saan ka pumuntang lugar, sa dera, sa satwa, at kung saan-saan pang emirate, eh may mga na nagawang hindi ka nais-nais pagdating sa love life. Wala man, laman la. Pinago na ni Lord. Tuloy, pag nakikita yung picture sa Facebook, sa Instagram, kung saan, may mga nagme-message sa'yo, hindi ba dati ikaw yung manluloko ng babae? Hindi ba dati ikaw yung andami mo linoko sa love life? Ngayon nabibless ako sa'yo, naglilingkod ka na sa Lord, at kung may kilala kayong ganyan, say Amen! amen! Kasi yun yung people of extraordinary faith. Yun yung people of extraordinary faith. Yung pag may pinagpipray sila, gumagaling. Yung pag may pinagpipray sila, nagkakatrabaho. Yung pag may pinagpipray sila na hiniheal ni Lord, ano na yun, eh, parang bunga na nakikita rin yung pinakadakilang himala ng pagbabago ng Lord sa kanilang buhay. Kaya kung ikaw naman yung binago na ng Lord ang buhay mo o binabago pa rin ni Lord ang yung buhay, hangarin mo rin ito na Lord, I also want to see miracles happening through my life. Hindi para sa akin, hindi para maging bida ako ang kanino so that I will be able to glorify your name. Believing of course that it's not magic. Believing of course also it's not also like a formula. But we know this because it is written in His Word. Nandito sa Biblia eh. Ilang beses na kwento yon Yung paghihimala ng Diyos at kung paano ginagamit niyang uh, ordinaryong tao tulad ng marami sa atin that when they lay hands, people are blessed. What is this? God's promise to His disciples. Ipinangako ng Panginoon yan sa kanya mga disipulo. Basahin natin ulit. Mark 16:17 to 18 Ang sabi po riyan, These signs will accompany those who have believed. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will pick up serpents. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Ipinangako ng Panginoon sa kanyang mga anak na pag tayo'y nagpipray at naglilay hands, we can expect miracles to happen. We can expect miracles to happen. Kaya anong work out natin? Wino work out natin. Attending church like this in our worship services, going to our Bible studies, attending our training programs. Anong wino work out natin? Matuto tayo. Pinag-aaralan natin yan. Matuto tayo. Ano sinasabi ng Biblia? Ano yung mga pinakita ng Lord sa kanyang mga disciples nung araw na ipinangako niya magpapatuloy pa rin hanggang ngayon sa kasalukuyan? Pero higit lang doon sa pag-aaral, gusto natin ito'y pinapractice in our lives. That we what? Exercise our faith. That we exercise our faith in the Lord. Kung nga yung physical na katawan, kailangan nag exercise Ganun din yung ating spirit. Ganun din yung ating spirituality. Ganun din yung ating faith. Dapat na exercise yan. Subukan nyo halimbawa, subukan nyo halimbawa na umakyat ng uh, hagdanan. Pagkatapos halimbawa ng anim na buwan o isang taon na hindi ka man lang nag exercise Kung kaya hirap yan, marami sa inyo nakaka-relate dyan. Hirap na hirap, halimbawa bag brown out, tapos hindi pa pwede ang elevator, nakatira ka sa 18th floor, <laughs> God bless you. God bless you. Alam mo yung ibig sabihin, nung hirap niyan, mahirap nga yung pagbaba, eh di lalo mas mahirap yung pag-akyat. Misa na patira kami dyan sa Sharjah, dyan sa Alnada, naranasan namin yan. May panahon na nag-brown out, may panahon na yung elevator nasira, and then the people, you would see them. Hirap na hirap kasi hindi nag exercise Hindi sanay. Hindi sanay. At ganun din pati yung ating faith. Pag biglang may mga sitwasyon na nangyayari, tapos nangyari na, hindi ka sanay, i-exercise ang faith mo, nahihirapan ka tuloy harapin yung iyong mga pinagdadaanan sa buhay. Ang bawa, dire-diretso lang yung employment mo, bigla ka na terminate. Tapos hindi ka sanay na gumagana ang faith mo in good times and in bad times. Pag na-terminate ka, parang gumuho na mundo mo. Parang gumuho na mundo mo. O di kaya limbawa, hindi mo akalain. Iwanan ka ng boyfriend mo. Iwanan ka ng asawa mo. Nagkatotoo sa iyo yung walang forever. <laughs> Nagkatotoo sa yung sinasabi ng mga teleserye walang forever. Eh, iba bilang gungo na ang buhay. Kasi nawala si person A, si person B. O di naman kaya, eh, pati yung kalusugan, kung biglang nagkaroon ng hindi magandang diagnosis, 
For some people, hindi na sila mag-church, hindi na sila maglilingkod, at para bang ayaw na mabuhay. Huwag nating hayaan na mangyari yan. Abutin tayo ng ganyan kung lagi tayong nag exercise ng ating faith in God. What is happening right now? You are being readied by the Lord as you're listening to this message and as you allow the Spirit of God to teach you, to mold you, to minister to you. You are being readied by God. You are being readied by God. Na kung dumating man ang mabigat na pagsubok sa buhay, it will be just like a walk in the park for you. Hindi mo lang napansin, ang bigat pala ng problema ang pinagdaanan ko, naalampasan mo. Just like that. Why? Kasi sanay ka na eh. Mag-exercise ng faith mo sa Panginoon. Na kung nawalan ka ng trabaho, miya ka lang saglit. Pero kung nabukasan, alam mo, babangon ako. Babangon ako. At bibigyan ako ni Lord ng mas magandang trabaho. Amen! Na kung iwanan ka ng boyfriend mo o ng asawa mo, babangon ako. At babangon lang. At alam mo, ang Lord, laging may mas magandang plano sa iyong buhay. Ano mang hindi maganda nangyayari, sanay ka nang mag-exercise ng faith mo eh. In good times and in bad times, you glorify God. In good times and in bad times, you thank the Lord. Kahit ano mangyari, you lay hands on people, you lay hands on yourself, you see this happening in your life. How many of you would like to see miracles happening in your life? Say Amen! amen. Gano karami sa atin gustong makita yan, mga himala na nagaganap sa ating buhay. Then believe this, that when people of extraordinary faith lay hands, miracles happen. Basahin natin yan together, let's proclaim it aloud. People of extraordinary faith lay hands and miracles happen. One more time, let's read it, proclaim it, declare it with conviction. People of extraordinary faith lay hands and miracles happen. I say when we go to church, it's not just about to feel good. Bagamata, I would love it if you go to our church and you would feel good after. Pero hindi yun yung goal. Hindi yun yung goal. Hindi yun yung uh, pinakamataas na pangarap natin. Alam natin yung pagpunta sa church, una sa lahat is to worship God, glorify God. Ganon din yung mga Bible studies at ibang gawain. Pero along with that, as we worship the Lord, alam natin, tinitrain tayo ng God. Tinitrain tayo ng Panginoon na magkaroon ng extraordinary faith. What else? Let Church leaders lay hands upon you. Sa bawat church, sa bawat ministry, may tinatawag ang Lord, tinitrain ng Lord, tinatalaga ang Panginoon na maging church leader. At yung mga church leaders na yan, pag tayo daw ay nagpalay hands sa kanila, blessings will flow from God. James 5.14 says, Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church, and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil, in the name of the Lord. Again, we read James 5.14. Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. Yung mga ilang bagay na pinanggit dyan, una na dyan yung kahalagahan ng spiritual leadership. The importance and uh, the existence of spiritual leadership in churches. Na hindi sila naroroon para lang display hindi lang sila naroroon para masabi may nangunguna, pero dahil naniniwala tayo ang Diyos ang tumatawag para magkaroon tayo ng spiritual leaders and through their lives, through their testimony, through their teachings, and through their training and ministry, tayo ibibless ng Panginoon. Kaya it's important for us to always identify people with extraordinary potential and giftings that would lead to becoming a spiritual leader. And it takes one to know one. At ako bilang pastor, yan ang lagi ko pinagpipray, Lord, guide mo ko, madiscern ko, sino among our people have the gift of leadership or may potential sa pangunguna at merong servant attitude. And once we discover them, we talk to them, we tap them, we train them. Training takes time. Sometimes training is very formal, tulad halimbawa ng mga courses, pinaaaten natin sila ng iba't ibang klaseng mga pagtuturo, pagsasanay, pero bukod doon sa formal training, eh, meron din naman mga informal types of training, pinagmamasdan natin kung ito ba'y leader, pag halimbawa sa harapan lang, eh, ito ba'y leader pati sa servanthood, 
Pag wala siya sa harapan, siya ba'y nangunguna pa rin tulad ng nangunguna sa pag-aayos ng silya? Uh, may pinipili ba siyang tatrabawin sa church? O halimbawa nakita niya may dumi sa toilet? O mayroon mga basura na dapat itapon sa mga pinagkainan? Kagawin din niya ba ang mga bagay na yan? Tinitingnan natin ang lahat ng yan kasi we want to train people hindi para maging star, hindi para maging diva, hindi para maging over above people. But we want to train people to become like Jesus Christ who himself became a servant for all men. Sabi nga niya, I came not uh, to be served but to serve. Kung siya mismo na dapat paglingkuran, e pumunta dito sa lupa upang maglingkod sa ibang mga tao. Gusto natin, ganun din ang mangyari sa mga leaders natin. Natitrain in skill, in leadership, but also getting trained in their character and in their attitude. Kaya, that takes time. That takes time. Sometimes, some people get trained faster. Sometimes, some people get trained a little bit longer. Depende rin minsan sa katigasan ng ulo. Dahil bakit ba naman minsan kung yung may calling, kung sino rin yung may husay, minsan kung sino rin yung may itsura, yun yung kititigas ng ulo. Buti na lang yung mga wala masyadong itsura. Buti na lang, buti na lang minsan yung, yung mga taong simple-simple lang ang puso, eh gusto lagi maglilingkod sa Lord. Alam niyo sometimes, it's really a responsibility to be very talented. Yung mga very talented people, you always find it, nandun yung pride. Kasi alam niya nga, magaling siya kumante. Alam niya, magaling siya tumugtog. Alam niya, matalino siya. And yes, sometimes misa alam niya may itsura siya. At dahil dun sa mga factors na yon nagiging matigas ang ulo. Sino ba lagi ang may problema sa love life? E din lagi na mamagnetize ng babae o na mamagnetize ng lalaki. Kaya buti pa yung mga taong walang magnet. Kaya pakisabi mo sa katabi mo, buti ka pa. Eba, pakisabi mo sa iyong katabi, buti ka pa. Whether may magnet o walang magnet. Dapat pare-pareho tayo ang desire magpabago sa Panginoon. Amen. Dapat pare-pareho tayong desire magpabago sa Panginoon. Sometimes you get people to stand up dahil tinitrain natin sila mag-preach. Sometimes I would get positive remarks and people telling me, people telling me, Pastor, na-bless ako nung pinagsalita natin si person A. Sometimes I also get uh, some negative remarks and they tell me, Pastor, parang may kulang pa kay person B. Parang may kulang sa delivery niya. O hindi naman sa delivery, mali ang interpretation niya. Minsan hindi lang mali interpretation. Okay, delivery, tama interpretation, palpak naman ang buhay. Minsan may mga ganun tayong natatanggap na mga remarks. And I always tell our people, be patient with them. Be patient with them. As God has been patient with me. As God has been patient with many of us. As God will be patient with many of you. But it is important na kahit anong flaws meron ng bawat isa sa atin, is that we know spiritual leadership is important. Kaya kung ikaw may tawag ka sa spiritual leadership, natapik ka, huwag mong takbuhan yan. Kung halimbawa, ito ka ngayon, tinitrain ka, magpatrain ka. Kung halimbawa, isa sa kailangan maayos ay yung mali sa iyong buhay, ipaayos mo sa Lord yung mali sa iyong buhay. Dahil, pag yung spiritual leader o yung may calling for leadership is released to do ministry, miracles do happen. When the person God has called would serve God and lead His people, miracles do happen. Na pag sila naglihan sa atin, nagtitiwala tayo na ang kanilang ispirito, yung kanila itinuturo, yung kanilang pananampalataya, yung blessing. Pinapadalay ng Lord sa kanya at pumupunta sa atin. Alam natin, good spirit, good vibes ang nalilipat sa atin. Pero iba, kakabahang kayo pag linayhan ka, naku po, baka bad spirit ang nalilipat sa akin dito. Kaya nga sabi nila, huwag ka rin magpalayans kung kanikanino lang. Dahil baka, oo nga, mahusay siya magsalita. Oo nga, baka mahusay siya mag-interpret. Kaya galing, may karisma. Pero yung buhay naman niya, sablay. So, ayaw mo rin na ganon yung hindi nagtitiwala ang tao sa ministry na ginagawa mo. Hindi na nakikita yung magandang patotoo. Nakita ko na kaya many times din yan. In my many years of ministry, pinapanood ko ang galing mag-preach. Ang mga tao, tawa ng tawa pinapanood ko ang husay niya sa marami niya mga ginagawa sa ministry. Tapos mamaya, pag kami-kami na lang, nagmumura. Mamaya, pag kami-kami na lang, ako, ang mga biro hindi kagandahan. Tapos may mga pangit na sinasabi sa kapwa-tao. Sabi ko, hindi naman sa hinuhusgahan ko siya. Pero ang pinagpipray ko pagdating ng araw, hindi ako maging ganyan. 
At ang pinagpipray ko, yung mga taong titingnan ako bilang pastor nila, ititrain ko rin maging leader, eh hindi rin maging ganun. Kaya sa lahat ng ayoko, ang mga taong dadal sa simbahan, magiging hipokrito. Ang mga tao datating sa simbahan, hindi magiging sincere. O yung mga patatayuin natin, kumakanta, tumutugtog, hindi totoo yung kanilang pananampalataya. And I pray that this will be our desire. That God will cause us to become a people sincere in our faith in God. Amen. That we will become a people who will be sincere in our faith in God. Kaya may pinanggit pa dyan at babasahin ko ulit. James 5.14 Is anyone among you sick? Then he must call for the elders of the church and they are to pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So yung pinanggit dyan na elder, ano na yan, yung uh, general na yan, pag tinatawag natin yung spiritual leaders in church, pwede nga yung in some churches may bishop, in some churches pastors, in some churches elders, deacons. Pagsamasamahin na natin doon sa term na yun yung the concept of spiritual leadership. In our church, there's a pastor, there are elders, there are deacons, there are coordinators. And sometimes people na kahit walang title, nakikita mo sila yung punong abala, nakikita mo sila yung masisipag, isang nakakabless pa yun eh. Yung walang titulo, pero nagfa-function because leadership is not about the title leadership is about the function at pag na-identify na natin yan ano sabi magpa-pray daw tayo sa kanila because they will anoint us with oil in the name of the Lord they will anoint us with oil in the name of the Lord literally oil talaga but then again it's not about magic it's not about having a formula but it's a symbol a symbol a symbol of the Spirit of God, the symbol of the presence of God, the symbol of the power of the Lord. Okay, every now and then, when God leads us, at available your anointing oil, we, we anoint people. We pray for people, believing that the Spirit of God, the blessing of God, will come upon them. Paano pag, sir, pag wala naman yung oil? Eh di walang oil. Uh, ang pinagpipray pa rin natin yung mga tao, but kung dumating man yung panahon na may oil, O wala mang oil, ang pinaka-importante doon is that we pray for people in the name of the Lord. Ang pinaka-importante is we pray for people in the name of the Lord. Kaya limbawa sa ating Monday worship, Wednesday worship, Friday worship services, whether in Abu Dhabi, in Dubai, in Qatar, in the Philippines, or anywhere, we raise up leaders. Pwedeng before the worship service, during the worship service, or after the worship service, may need ka, lapitan mo mga leaders, magpa-pray ka sa kanila. Pastor, sila lang ba yung dadaluyan ng blessing? Hindi naman. But then again, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, faith. Pinag-uusapan natin dito, magkaroon tayo ng faith na ang Lord ang naglagay ng mga leaders na yon. And through their lives, God can bless us as well. That through their lives, God can bless us as well. So help me pray for godly leaders to rise up amongst us in our church. Help me pray that through our church, sincere and anointed leaders will rise up from within our church. Be patient with me. Let's be patient with a lot of our people. Let's pray to God that through Rise Up Church, our church, and any other church, godly, sincere, anointed leaders will rise up. And through their lives, other people will be blessed. Pakisabi nyo nga sa inyong mga katabi, gusto ko pagdating ng araw, ikaw maglehan sa akin. Pakisabi nyo nga sa inyong mga katabi, gusto ko pagdating ng araw, ikaw maglehan sa akin. Wag muna ngayon. Pagdating ng araw. Ha? Pagdating ng araw. But who knows it's gonna be sooner than later. Who knows it's gonna be sooner than later. Welcome prayer visitations. Welcome prayer visitations. Acts 28 verse 8. It so happened that the father of Publius lay sick in bed with fever and dysentery. Paul visited him and cured him by praying and putting his hands on him. May isang eksena sa Biblia dito sa Acts 28 verse 8 na may binisita. At nung binisita, may sakit yung binisita, linay hands gumaling. Gusto ko makita sa church natin yan among our people. Una with our leaders and then besides our leaders, even us, attendees and volunteers, bumibisita tayo sa bawat isa. Minsan may napapa-absent sa worship service ngayon, sa Bible study, O nakita natin sa Facebook o sa social media, may pinagdadaanan, puntahan mo sa ospital, puntahan mo sa bahay, and visit them, and pray for them. And believe it that when you go to these people and pray for these people, they will receive blessing through your prayer visitation. And that's why I ask our leaders, 
I ask our elders, our deacons, our coordinators, magkano kayo ng burden for people. Magkano kayo ng burden for people. Huwag niyo naintayin na mismo yung pasot pa sa church ang mga punta. E baka ikaw na yung pinakamalapit, puntahan mo na. At ikaw naman na gusto magpabisita. Huwag mo na antayin na bisitahin kayo. Ikaw na magsabi, pakibisita po ako. Dahil minsan may mga tao hindi na maalam kung gusto mo magpabisita. May mga bahay kaya hindi ganun kadali bisitahin. Baka bawal din magpabisita. May ganun. Minsan may mga kwarto dito, alam mo yan sa Dubai, dapat tatlo lang ang nakatira, biglang 25 pala na doon sa bahay na yan. Kaya tuloy hindi ganun kadali na basa-basa na lang bumisita sa mga bahay-bahay. Kung gusto mo pala at kailangan mo na nabibisita ka, huwag ka na mag ikaw na magsabi doon sa mga leaders, pwede niyo po ba akong bisitahin at ipag-pray ako. Minsan naman yung iba, hindi naman sa ayaw ka bisitahin, hindi lang nila alam na gusto mo at willing ka. Alam mo, hulaan mo lagi yun. O di naman kaya pagdating sa uh, social media, you send messages and tell people, I need prayer, I need prayer visitation. Magbisita tayo sa bawat isa. At ipag-pray natin ang bawat isa. Welcome prayer visitations in your home. And realize this. You have been blessed to be a blessing. You have been blessed to be a blessing. 1 Timothy chapter 4.14 says, Use the gift you were given when the prophet spoke and the group of church leaders blessed you by placing their hands on you. There are two things I'd like us to learn from this verse. I'll read it again. 1 Timothy 4.14 Use the gift you were given when the prophet spoke and the group of church leaders blessed you by placing their hands on you. Two things. First, Pag naka-identify tayo ng mga tao na may mga giftings, merong calling, may talents, the leadership of the church, the leadership of our church, blesses these people, lays hands on them, if possible publicly, para makita ng mga tao, these people have the gift. These people have the calling. These people are being recognized for what God has given them. Because we know what God has given them, God has given them so that we can be blessed through their ministry. Kaya every now and then, makakakita kayo sa ating worship service sa mga taong pinatatayo natin. Sinasabi natin, ito ngayon ang ating bagong music team. Ito yung bago nating mga singers. Napakinggan na po natin yan at napakinggan po natin may boses po talaga. Kaya linilayhands natin at binibless para ang boses ay magamit sa Lord. Ang talit ay magamit sa Panginoon. O di naman kaya mga future preachers and teachers in our church. Binibigyan pa natin ng designation na deacon, na, na limbawa elder. Pinatatayo din natin at kumbaga sinasabi natin, they passed through the test, they went through our trainings, and when they preach, know that the church has blessed them, has recognized them. Every now and then, we do that. But the second meaning of what we've just read is this, that laying hands is about impartation of blessing. Everybody say with me, impartation. Everybody say with me, impartation. impartation. Napag nagli-lay hands, so limbawa, ako, preacher ako ngayon, Tapos meron tayo mga gustong maging preacher din sa church. We lay hands on them. So ako, pag lay hands ko sa kanila, nagkakaroon kami ng impartation. Ini-impart ko sa kanya. Yung ibinigay sa akin ng Panginoon. If God has blessed me to be a preacher, I lay hands on you so that God will bless you as a preacher yourself. If God has blessed me as a worship leader, I bless you. I lay hands on you. So if God has been using me as a worship leader, I will pass his anointing on you. If God has used me to pray for people who are sick and they became well, I lay hands on you so that you will also pray for others and they will be healed. Importante sa atin yung concept of impartation. It's something like this. I bless you with what God has given me. I bless you with what God has given me. Practice nga natin, sabihin natin yan together. I bless you with what God has given me. Say that with me one more time. I bless you with what God has given me. What can we learn from that? First, that we're not selfish. Ang Christian dapat hindi maging selfish. Bines ka ng Lord ng financial wealth. Bines ka ng Lord ng magandang trabaho. Bines ka ng Lord ng magandang financial standing. Eh, hindi lahat may ganon. So gusto mong ilayhan sa mga taong maaari may pinagdadaan. Sabi mo sa kanya, I bless you with financial prosperity in Jesus' name. That what God has given me, I impart to you. Alimbawa, sa relationships, kaya na lagi natin ang pag-uusapan. May mga taong hindi nakaka-jackpot sa love life. May mga taong hindi nakaka-jackpot sa relationship. Lagi na lang hindi pumapatok, hindi nagtatagal, kaya nga tuloy nasasabing, walang forever. Pero may ilan din naman, may ilan din naman, nakajakpat, 
Kaya lapitan mo minsan yung mga, yan ang prayer request, I bless you with what God has given to me. Kung binigyan ako ng Lord na magandang relationship, pinagpipray ko magkaroon ka rin ng ganyan. O di naman kaya pati sa ministry. If God has given you the anointing to preach, the anointing to lead, the anointing to uh, sing and, and play music, bless others with these things. Kasi ang Christian, hindi siya selfish. Ang Christian, hindi siya selfish. Kaya practicein lang natin sa mga katabi natin could you just do this like this to your right and to your left. Tapikin nyo, tapikin nyo para bang dinilay hands nyo na and say this with me. I bless you with what God has given me. Again, say it again. I bless you with what God has given me. You maging single forever. Ay, hindi. Hindi pala yun. Erase. 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 <laughs> Biglang may mga napalunok. <laughs> I bless you with what God has given me. I remember as a teenager way, way back, I would watch this amazing preacher preach. And I would pray to God, Lord, kung paano mo siya ginagamit, gusto ko pagdating ng araw, Lord, magamit mo rin ako tulad niya. And I would meet these people, personally. And they would graciously lay hands on me and say, what God has given them, they were imparting to me. And, and I would like to believe that even to this day, na ako'y preacher na, na how I became a servant of God, how I became a preacher, part of that is that because God used those men and women na tinitingnan ko lang nung araw, pero hindi siya naging selfish, linayans nila ako at naimpartan ako ng kanilang anointing, naimpartan ako ng kanilang experience, naimpartan ako ng kanilang blessing as they laid hands on me. Okay, what does that tell you also? Be responsible with your life. Be responsible with your calling. Be responsible with the things that God has given you. Kasi yung pala yun, no? you are blessed to be a blessing. Nalulungkot ako sa mga tao na may matinding potential sa ministry. Nalulungkot ako sa mga tao na pwede maging pagpapala sa buhay ng marami mga tao, hindi nangyayari. Kasi dahil hindi nagpapaayo sa sablay ng kanilang buhay, nananatiling matigas ang ulo, hindi ginagawa yung pinagagawa ng Panginoon. O di naman kaya eh, dapat matuwid na ang buhay pero lagi may under the table, lagi may ginagawang hindi na dapat ginagawa. Dapat gumaduate na tayo sa ganyan. At tayo sumuko sa Panginoon at sabihin sa Kanya, Lord, I'm ready for the blessing. Sabihin sa, Lord, I'm ready for your blessing. I want to live a life that is blessed by God. Because you know you are blessed to be a blessing to people. Because you know you are blessed to be a blessing to people. It challenges us to be responsible. Kaya kung pagkatapos ang message na to, pagkatapos ang worship service na to, nagbabala ka pa pumunta sa kadiliman, alam mo na gagawin mo? Hindi na. Kung may nag-text sa'yo habang nag-worship pa tayo, o mamaya magkikita tayo after niyang pa-just-just mo ha. May ganon. At may ganon talaga Uy, mag, mag, alam mo na gagawin natin pag, sige, uh, para balance ang life. Eh mga pagganong ganon. So nagpakabanal muna para mamaya pag nagkaroon ng kadiliman yung medyo parang ang sarap na feeling. <laughs> Hindi pwedeng ganon. Kailangang pangarapin na natin na masarap ang feeling all the way. Kailangang pangarapin na natin na ang pagpapala ng Lord eh dumadaloy ng lubos-lubos sa ating buhay. Naglalakad ka lang, oh, dumaan ng anino mo, gumaling na siya. Grabe. Huminga ka lang, gumaling na siya. Humatsing ka lang, nagkapera na. Umupo ka lang, napuno restaurant. Yung walang kaduda-duda, yung blessing ng Lord, nasa iyo. Walang kaduda-duda, nakikita mo saan ka pumunta, ang pagpapala ng Lord follows you. That happens as we learn to live a life that truly pleases God. Let this be our desire. Knowing all of these things was a challenge for us. Pray for people and lay hands on them. Pray for people and lay hands on them. At home, may asawa ka. Yung asawa mo minsan challenging. Hintay mo matulog. Pag nakapikit na, humihilik na, o lay hands mo. Painon, lahat ng mga challenge ko dito sa asawa ko, o boyfriend ko, sino man, Lord, I rebuke in Jesus' name. At pinagpipray ko, Panginoon, na bumait na ito. At pag hindi pa, Lord, talaga bumait, alam mo na ang gagawin mo. Ine-entrust ko siya sa'yo. O sa anak mo, o kung kanino man, in your life, let's learn to lay hands on the people that we love. 
Let's learn to lay hands on challenging people in our lives sometimes. Just before I came to our worship service tonight, I was uh, burdened with a friend na yung anak niya, a teenager, has brain tumor. Has brain tumor. And I know how challenging it is na magkaroon ka ng anak at yung anak mo eh may malubang karamdaman. And I pray that there will be Christians who will go to that particular family and to that particular young person to lay hands on that young man and rebuke that sickness so that that young man will be healed. And we believe that miracles can happen even for people with cancer. I believe miracles can happen even with people with diabetes. I believe miracles can happen even with people with incurable diseases. I believe miracles can happen sa mga taong hindi magkaanak. I believe miracles can happen sa mga taong walang trabaho, sa mga taong baon sa utang. I believe miracles do happen. Amen. Amen. You may have come to this church today in your heart may burden. Para sa iyo, problema mo o problema ng mga mahal mo sa buhay, know that you came to the right place. Know that you're hearing the right message. That God is putting in your heart this faith to believe that nothing is impossible with God. That God is putting in your heart to believe that nothing is impossible with God. Hindi ko alam ang pinagdadaanan nating lahat. Pero ang Panginoon alam ang pinagdadaan mo sa buhay. Manampalataya ka. Even as we pray, and even as people lay hands on you, even as you lay hands on others, miracles do happen. Sa church, sa mga gawain natin, Pati mamaya, sa pagtatapos ng message nito, we're gonna lay hands on each other. And I want all of us to believe that mighty things can happen even tonight. That great and mighty things can happen even tonight. Amen. Kano karami sa inyo, merong personal prayer request, pakitaas nga ang kanang kamay, meron kayo mag pray Praise the Lord. We're gonna believe that tonight. We're gonna believe that tonight. That God will do extraordinary things as we have this extraordinary faith. O ito pa minsan, walang magpipray para sa iyo. You, you suddenly find yourself nag-iisa somewhere. Eh di pag-pray mo sarili mo. Minsan kung karamdaman, kung ano yung ng katawan mo na, halimbawa nananakit, may migraine ka, may headache ka, may kate, kirot, bukol, kung saan parte na yung katawan, nangihina, ang iba parte katawan mo, exercise your faith. You lay hands on yourself. Lord, ang sakit ng ulo ko, pero naniniwala ko, pagagalingin mo to in Jesus' name. Lord, may, may sakit yung pain dito sa kamay ko, but I pray you will heal me in Jesus' name. Lord, yung puso ko, sinaktan, tinapakan, dinurog ng kung sino-sino, pero alam ko, Panginoon, bubuin mo ito ulit. Bubuin mo ito ulit. At bibigyan mo po ko ng aking pagpapala. Yung bulsa mo, lagi na lang walang laman. Lay hands mo yung bulsa mo, yung wallet mo, yung ATM machine mo, uh, ATM card mo, you lay hands on all these things and pray in Jesus' name. Alam ko, ibibless ng Panginoon ang wallet ko. Ibibless ng Lord ang kamay ko. Laging dadali ang pera at mananatili yung pera doon. Believe in your heart that when you lay hands, miracles do happen. No, that is not about having a magic formula. It's not about having a magic formula. It's about exercising our faith in God. It's about exercising our faith in God. Knowing all these things, remember, Whatever you do next will change your situation. Whatever you do with this message will change your situation. Whatever you'll do next after this will change your situation. And by God, by His grace, in Jesus' name we believe, we'll get better. Our situation will get better. Things will get better. Our lives will become better because of Jesus Christ. Amen. That truly because of Jesus Christ, miracles do happen. And we're believing God today. Na sa paglilihans po namin sa bawat isa, kumilos ang iyong banal na Espiritu. Dumaloy ang kagalingan sa mga taong nagpray for healing. We're just believing today people have been healed because of Jesus Christ. Nainiwala di kami Panginoon na nagpa-pray para sa kanilang mga trabaho na inaayos mo ang problema sa kanya-kanyang mga trabaho. You're giving people new jobs, people who lost their jobs. We're believing this. In the coming days, we're gonna see the fruit of these prayers. We're gonna see God's answering our prayers and people receiving better jobs. We're praying for people with problems with their visas, with problems with their salaries, seeing, Lord, the overflowing blessings of God in their lives. Pinagpipray din namin, Lord God, kanina, yung mga kapatirang may problema sa kanilang mga relationships, 
kanilang mga asawa, kanilang mga boyfriends, sa kanilang love life and families. We're believing in Jesus' name. You've answered, Lord, the prayers of your people. Naniwala kami, Panginoon, mga taong pinagpipray finances nila in a very powerful way that you're providing people with the finances they need in life. Father, we give you glory. Lord, we give you honor. We give you praise. We're receiving blessing today. In Jesus' name, this is our prayer. Amen. Palapakan po natin ang Panginoon.